Huh? Huh? What do you think? Clearly, it's a setup for me returning for those Gachard reviews. You sure about that, Blade? You've been looking awfully white recently. You're just mad you didn't get the Gachard theme right. Space face, crazy. No, 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 it's not that. It's your hair. Every week, it just keeps getting whiter. You doing all right? Look, I am perfectly fucked. Oh my God. You're turning into a white guy now. You mean, I have privilege? Quick, think of a desire. I want the third volume in the Geats in My Sheet series. Wow. Not even subtle. Um, you think we can get k in on this? Just, just wow. <laughs> This is just pictures of Kawa sucking and licking on spoons. Oh my, Jesus Christ. This really is just full on penetration. And speaking of Jesus Christ, this week on Geats, we go back to gun levels of homework copying while tossing in characters just to toss them back out. It wasn't much of a setup for a film as I feared, but even then, what we got, well, Beroba finds herself leftovers while Neon rejoins the squad after Ace's power grew beyond his ass. Because now we find out that the key to his powers comes from people just believing in the same thing. Believing in the same thing is just the vibe Jito was looking for. So he brings in some more like-minded individuals. Neon, now with the family love she needed, goes shopping with moms. But that's when Mr. Leg shows up like a car crash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Magnum Shooter returns to live out his fantasy. No, the shots don't land. He sets his eyes on mom instead. But Nan's not about to lose her face warmer and take the hit. It's here that we see a concept that should have been used more frequently earlier in the show. The audience members trying to skew the odds. Giving Dapan the luxury of... What? Really, Blade? You're manipulating the show now. S stop. I don't think I can undo the privilege that is this Pandora's box. So, here we go, because that man goes from shooting boots to beating on them. But Fantasy got that new form power scaling, with Kitty giving him the claws and using the object warping just to finish what that car started. And just because he ain't hooping no more doesn't mean he can't play offense and shoots the mom instead. Dapan finally takes the win and leaves. You know, we really have a lot of bad guys this season that just uh, don't finish the job. Didn't this guy want to end all of humanity? You're right. Well now, he's teamed up with Kawa, even though their ideals aren't similar. Dapan. I really forget old buddy's actual name. I don't think I've ever said it. Either way, he knows what it's like to lose everything. Right? Just, just wish for good legs or that your hoop game's back. While Gates and the others chill, Jito chimes on in with the schedule of the final battle between Ace and Kawa. But they need to find a way to fix Kawa's head and they know just the guy. Daichi is right out of the hospital and recovered quickly. It looks like the DGP reset didn't reset his Jamato genes. Okay, excuse me, but what the f- You know, you know what? You know what? Ne never mind. Never mind. This, this is Geats. They go to check on the tree that's now just a tree and start to give Daichi his redemption arc with the plan to reverse Kawa's wish and go back to the world before it happened and then saving the folks from that tree. It's finally time. Tycoon V Geeks, let's get ready for stock footage! Right off the bat, we take the fight to the air. But then, Tycoon makes it a quick game of peekaboo with his sword. And the slashing just keeps on going. We interrupt this fight just to plug the upcoming Geeks movie with this shitty song. Oh god, that's, that's almost 
almost as bad as this fight right now. Well, let's spice it up with audience support. First up, Monstar. I think giving up range with this form was a bad draw. So while Dapan soaks in that fight, Win busts his way into Jito's place. But first, he's gonna make Sumiri sad and snatch up his future plot MacGuffin that is her tears. But when they're about to soak in the festivities to Geet's getting beat, it's Win that shows up to get his ass beat just long enough for Sumiri to make her escape. From one ass beat to another, Taiku finally gets the boot. But Geet wants to go ahead and rail on that, so Tycoon is not gonna give him the chance to do it. After shattering that iceberg, we get a little game of Hit Me If You Can. I feel like Geet is really taking this fight lightly, leaving himself wide open for a boost haunch. So that's Alright, you done? So yeah, Ace wasn't taking that fight seriously because he's got to convince Keiwa with something besides his foot up his ass. But that's when Sumiri shows up with her wig, coming off slowly, letting Keiwa in on just what Ace is trying to do. So, he's got to believe in the Ace that believes in him, but he has his doubts and pulls out his foam sword, allowing the three to resonate with the strength of wisdom courage and power, and summoning up the Triforce to remake the world yet again. Rating time! This episode manages to reintroduce concepts seen before, and would have been interesting had they done them back in the day, while bringing back the first annoying character of the show, writing him off by the end, and then setting up Daichi for a redemption arc. Yeah, yeah, nah, now, nah, what, what are y'all doing? Fours? <laughs> they really go out of their way to bring back Dabhan, which no one asked for, just to apparently write him off after this reset. And look, uh, another thing that this episode did is show that Geats did restore the memories of all the writers, because when Beroba singles him out, he doesn't seem phased by it. I just hated that the way that she was walking in the beginning was showing signs of last week's beating up, but... No, she's fine and ready for next week. But clearly, the most annoying thing about this episode is that they're setting up Daichi for a redemption arc, since it all falls back on his tree. So their plan is to somehow undo Kewa's wish so they can get back the tree and then free the people from inside that tree. You know what sucks about that prospect? Well, you know, Kewa technically brought back a lot of people. A lot of people that were dead. Some of them are good people, like old man Takahito who died in episode 2. And guess what undoing that wish does? They all go back to being dead. Keiwa's parents also just stay dead. But you know, they'll probably find some way to change the way the world works again. Another annoying bit is Jito bringing in new audience members, who this time act like how I wish the audience concept worked back when they got introduced. Since, don't get me wrong, it's cool to see them using the buckle menu to support their contestants. But this should have already been a thing. And before you say that the four supporters that we did get did that already, the way that they did it was completely different because it was firsthand talking to them and then giving it to them. Versus how this audience works, which in practice seems much more fitting for the way this show worked. Too bad it's just coming like four episodes before the end. Next, we get Super Tropy with Ace's powers being drawn by everyone believing in him. He's literally a god in that respect. The question is if he sucked the goddess powers from Sumiri as well or if she retained them. Because her white form was literally just stopping statuification. It wasn't originally shown to really boost or heighten her abilities in a way. It just made her more obedient. So it's kind of weird for Ace to go white-haired, blue-eyed, unless he starts statuifying himself, or he just becomes literally more obedient. The ass poll for this week that we'll seep into next week is Sumiri's tear that condensed in Jito's possession. That will likely be what they use to make Black Sumiri that we see in the future. So is she a clone made from her tear, or is even such a thing possible? Also, why didn't they just do that earlier. She's been crying. We have like four episodes left 
and y'all really still trying to cook. I think the best way that I can do an analogy for Geats, up until now at least, is when you cook chicken and it gets cooked perfectly. It's, it's juicy, it's full of flavor. And that's about the episode 16 mark of the show. Then you forget to take it out of the oven and that shit just ends up getting overcooked. Burnt to a crisp. And now you're just scraping off all the burnt to get to that dry ass meat. You tell yourself it's okay because you don't want to admit that you fucked up. And though Gachard's on its way, that chicken is still in the freezer and they gotta thaw that thing out. It just ain't ready yet. I could just stay roasting this episode all day, but you know, I, I gotta edit this video. So next week, it looks like Ozma dies. But you know, he's got zombies, so it's probably gonna contribute towards his upgrade. Three episodes before the show is over. So what did you think about this week's Geats? Kawa finally believing, Sumuri always believing, and everyone don't stop believing. Anyway, that's it for me. I gotta get on beef between my cheeks and then Tycoon sucking on spoons. Until then, bye.